Let's start off with this graph. This is CO2 levels versus temperature over the last 500 million years. From this, it would appear that the two have hardly anything in relation. With or without this graph, we know this much. Carbon dioxide absorbs energy reflected by our planet that would normally go into space, and then radiates it throughout our atmosphere as heat. Guy Stewart Callender demonstrated this in the 1940s, and since then we've come to understand the mechanism of how gases like CO2 are capable of absorbing this energy. Knowing this, without even viewing a graph, it could be determined that the more CO2 there is, the more heat is in our atmosphere, which means the Earth heats up. This is just common sense. Now let's go back to that graph. I'm going to take us through 500 million years of Earth's history, CO2 levels, and temperature to show exactly why this graph isn't a proof or disproof of anything. I'll have you take notice of something very important here. CO2 levels are already falling at the start of this graph. Why is this? Temperature is high, and CO2 is high, but temperature falls and CO2 is still high, but it is declining slowly. What gives? Well, 535 million years ago, we see the Cambrian Explosion, the blossoming of complex animals on Earth. The reason we see the Cambrian Explosion when we do is because suddenly, on a global time scale, the atmosphere contained more oxygen. Oxygen is the essential molecule in producing ATP, which is our body's energy source. So why the increase in oxygen? The reason would be that marine plant life was beginning to prosper after a period of glaciation 580 million years ago. This meant CO2 levels would drop and oxygen levels would rise, and with a rise in oxygen levels we see a blossoming of complex animal life appear. This is the reason that the CO2 level was already declining at the start of the graph. Then we see a massive fall in temperature. This was a result of the Ordovician Silurian extinction around 445 million years ago. The suspected reason for this extinction was the shift of a continental mass in the southern polar region. This caused global temperatures to drop, glaciers to form, and a great loss of life. Now, notice, once this period of cooling due to continental drift ended and we reach our next peak of temperature, CO2 concentrations begin falling more rapidly. Why is this? Because at this point in time, land plants were first able to migrate into areas unknown in the previous 100 million years, and had spent millions of years evolving methods of survival on land to cope with these new conditions. Once they were able to expand, plant life flourished, and expectedly, CO2 levels would drop harshly. Then the next temperature drop happens, around 390 to 310 million years ago. This resulted in the Devonian extinction, around 370 million years ago. Notice that CO2 continues on its downward trend until the extra temperature drop 320 million years ago. This extra temperature drop killed off the excess plant life that had flourished, and afterwards we see CO2 rise again, as it would be expected. The cause of the extinction is unknown, though all leading theories suggest global cooling, potential causes including volcanic activity, asteroids, a decrease in dissolved oxygen levels in the ocean, the cause is irrelevant here. The important thing to note is that it was a natural effect that caused this ice age, and it was a very large natural effect. We then see CO2 levels rise, as expected, until the Earth reaches a new peak heat, in which plant life can again flourish, and again we see the CO2 levels drop. But at the next ice age, CO2 levels again rise due to the death of plant life. This occurred in the Permian-Triassic extinction. It is proposed that many factors contributed to this extinction. The point is, again, global cooling was initiated by an unrelated source to CO2, and again we see CO2 levels rise until plant life can begin to recover with a slight temperature peak. And as temperature increases, plant life can again flourish and CO2 levels begin to decrease faster and faster until about 40 million years ago when we reach a balance. Keep that in mind, we are living in a general balance in CO2 levels that has been maintained for 40 million years. And though temperature has gone up overall since then, to get an idea as to why the recent period of warming is a concern, we'll have to zoom into a much more recent graph. It can be seen that, though CO2 has a warming effect, it had little to do with the past climate changes as natural disasters were far more influential. The next thing to note is that the major mover and shaker when it comes to Earth's climate change is the output of the sun. This is called solar irradiance. Since the sun is our planet's main source of energy, when the sun is sending us more energy, obviously the climate will be warmer. And when it's sending us less, the climate will be cooler. This is a well understood phenomenon. So we know that CO2 had little to do with the climate change in the distant past. However, what we now understand is why CO2 changed and its relation to temperature in the graph. It's also apparent that in the distant past, CO2 wasn't a major force in climate changes. Let's head to the next graph, one more recent, detailing CO2 and temperature over the last 400,000 years from the Vostok ice core. Here we see a very interesting correlation. CO2 and temperature practically mimic each other. The problem is that CO2 levels lag temperature levels by about 800 years. So it would appear that CO2 is being driven by temperature in this period of balance. 
This isn't disputed, but what we must once again remember is that CO2 has a warming effect, so when temperature produces more CO2, that in turn raises the temperature. We have a positive feedback loop, a loop in which both encourage each other. Through this, it is assumed that most of the climate changes in this time are a result of solar forcing or other natural phenomenon. Again, very little to do with CO2. In these climate swings, CO2 was just a helper after a temperature rise was already initiated. It is important that you understand this before moving on. Increase the temperature and more CO2 is given off by the Earth, which causes the temperature to increase some more, giving off more CO2. Now then, let's move on to the next graphs, ones detailing a much more recent period. Here we see a very good correlation of solar activity and temperature, as we would expect, since the sun provides us with our energy. But from the 1970s onward, we see solar irradiance remain more or less static. If you want to follow solar irradiance right up to the late 80s, then let's just say that we see a decline in solar output over the last 20 years, but an increase in temperature. So what is the cause for the current rise in temperature? Here is the proposal of man-made climate change. Our excessive CO2 output is initiating the temperature and CO2 positive feedback loop. The difference this time is that it is CO2 that's making the first move in driving temperature and not the other way around. Please take some time to really understand this. The proposal of man-made climate change isn't that CO2 is a major cause of all climate changes or even any of the past climate changes. The assertion is that our current spike in CO2 levels, which are far higher than they have been in the last 40 million years, is going to be the trigger for the next temperature CO2 positive feedback rise. To sum up everything in regards to climate change in this short amount of time is next to impossible. But what I have presented here are the basics from 500 million years of climate history. I'll be posting a series of videos on climate change in the near future, dealing with things in far greater detail. This series will explain the actual mechanisms of global warming, the myths that have grown up around it, the qualified objections to the proposal of man-made climate change, and the consequences we can expect from this period of warming. I hope you'll meet me in the next video so we can become better informed about one of the most important issues of our time. I'd like to give a huge thanks to Miami Manny for providing brand new custom animations for this video. They were great, and I'm going to be using them in future videos. I'd also like to thank Potholer54 for his climate change series, as it has helped me in tracking down some good references and formatting my future videos. If you don't want to wait for my videos to be finished before learning more about the issue, then I'd advise you watch Potholer54's videos on climate change, as well as subscribe to GreenMan3610, who has an ongoing series called Climate Denial Croc of the Week, in which he debunks, well, the title is self-explanatory. Thanks for watching, and I'll meet you in the next video.